Let me step back. So you gotta control that sales process. All right, so Michael Fisher asks, assuming I spend all day selling old school style, how do I make a better autoresponder sequence to pre-sell my clients so that they beg me to buy by the time I text message, I'm ready to just message me that they're ready to buy. I'm ready uh, to get up on the phone. Oh, so you're doing phone calls, you're trying to follow up, and blah, this, that, and the other thing. Okay, so I'm not sure what industry you're in. Maybe it's real estate, maybe it's, um, you know, just selling, right? So you're selling a service, I'm guessing, instead of a product necessarily. Two things. First off, kind of snuck it into that last sentence. If you're selling a service and you really want to increase your sales, the first thing you really have to do is take a look at your service. If it's not clearly defined what you're actually providing value-wise, you need to, to revamp the messaging behind your service and actually pretend your service is a product. Pretend it's boxed in a box and, and someone buys that box and they, they open it and they, they pull out pieces and Ikea style almost and, and you're helping them build whatever's in the box. So your service is building the item in the box. What's in the box? Not taking, give me the What's in and you're selling that box, which is results, the value that they get out of using your product and service. So that's, first off, that's how you should sell a service is think of it as a product. So if it's, you do a consulting service, you need to brand it as a product, almost just think of it in the terms of product and it becomes a lot easier to sell. The second thing, as far as follow-up goes, Controlling that sales process is very important. So if someone's buying a service from you uh, and and you're delivering it and, and the, there's this back and forth and there's this long process of selling, um, you gotta control that sales process. And that's, that's part of the follow-up, that's part of the initial, that's part of the whole process. So once you've divine, signed your service as more of a product, then when a prospect comes into your sphere of sales, whether it's you're reaching out to them or they're reaching out to you, the process becomes changing the way that you communicate to uh, from, from a sales conversation to um, a value conversation. I know that's kind of abstract, like, ooh, get value, but the truth is, it needs to always, the conversation always needs to be about where they are and where they wanna be and how you're gonna get them there. That's the only sales conversation needs to happen. That's the follow-up, that's the initial call, that's the, the close. Everything is about where they are and where the, that you can get them. 150 million without breaking a sweat. And if the conversation is more than that, then you're probably doing overkill. You can get to know them, you can, you know, know like trust is a good thing. They can like you, they can go get beers with you, but if they say, I don't know, I can't really afford that, or I'm not, you know, I'm not, that's not something I want to buy. They don't see the value then. So your whole job in the sales process is to get them to understand the value, whether it's through math, whether it's through understanding they'll have more time, and that, what they can do with that time, what their business could uh, do with higher sales or higher earnings or whatever your service is providing, um, and always tie your service or your product back to uh, where they're going to end up. Uh, that that's the first thing with the follow-up and then follow-up as far as autoresponders and things you can put people on an email sequence kind of entertain and inform them that's kind of what I try to do is is if anybody uh, opts in for a product or service of mine uh, generally I try to keep things light and it um, and inform them and, and when they digest your content you win so if they're watching your videos or reading your emails it's great so the better high quality as far as uh, delivery goes making it fun entertaining to watch uh, making it informative and always give a nice insight so if you're doing a follow-up sequence like they let's say you do a phone call and you say hey let me send you some info and you're doing follow-up emails you always want to have that kind of conversation of here's what you think you need here's what you really need. And, and what I mean by that is, it sounds almost clickbaity, right? But it, it, it's the truth. A lot of people think they know what they need, but they actually aren't informed enough to actually make a good decision. So your job is to not teach them necessarily all about your product and service, but to teach them about the whole industry or the whole business that you're in and the mistakes to avoid and the, the things to look out for. So that's your follow-up, is literally just teaching them uh, things to avoid, things to look for, in, uh, in the buying decision because that's what they're doing. They're either going to buy from you or a competitor or no one. So your job is to, to demonstrate value, teach them why working with you is so important and the mistakes that can come with working with someone else 
and the big mistakes that come with not doing anything at all. So make sure you get those points across because if you are selling a, a valuable product and service, um, it's your duty to help businesses see that. So I hope that helps answer your question and okay. Why didn't you reply to my podcast invitation? Says Stephen. As, as, cause, z, z. Stephen, how do you pronounce your last name? E S K E T Z I S? Eskits. Eskits. Stephen Eskit. Anyway, real talk. What's the biggest grossing product launch you put together and how much did it do? So, to answer your first question, we still need to do a podcast. I wanted to wait till I actually had something to, like, give value either, like, you know, send people to I have like a lot of random little products, but I wanted, I, I, I needed this uh, Increase Academy thing to be live. Um, so we'll, we'll still, we'll do it. Um, so the biggest grossing product launch.